Welcome to the absolute last DAT score breakdown video you are ever going to have to watch. Now, if you already know what section you want some advice on, feel free to skip ahead. I have the entire video timestamped and best of luck to you studying. What does exam day look like? I mean, essentially it's like this, right? You show up to the testing center, you give the employee your two forms of ID. So, you know, a driver's license and a credit card, for example, they're going to hand you a key that goes to your locker. And then you go sit down and you wait for your name and the exam to be called. They take you to a little back room where all the computers are. You sit down, do your thing, you crush it, and then you check out and leave. Now, back in the day, you would get that instant, you know, unofficial score report. Things are different now, but this is important. Main takeaway. If you feel like you did really well in your heart, you know, you did well, take a couple days, maybe a week and then start studying again, just in case. If you know you did bad, take a day, maybe two max, and then get back into it. Don't lose that momentum, okay? The last thing you wanna do is have to get back in that grind mindset when you unfortunately might want to retake the exam to improve your score, right? So remember that. If you feel good, take some time, start studying. If you feel bad, a day or two, get back to it. So what's the best way to stay prepared before and after the exam? Well, there's no one size fits all when it comes to studying, but I personally only use DAT Booster. So before we do the section by section analysis, I do wanna take some time to kind of highlight the website and show off all the features that I thought were pretty cool. So when you log in, here's your homepage. You've got your warm up, you've got study groups you can join, all the different announcements, rewards, achievements, etc. If you scroll down, you got your progress bar. So, okay, how many bio videos have I watched? How many gen chem questions do I have left, etc. Left hand side here, you have all the different topics broken down. When you press on one, you have the different practice exams, video content, study notes, the flashcards, which are very essential because the site actually gives you pre made Anki decks, which are crucial. Or if you like Quizlet, they also have that as well. Over here, also on the left hand side, you have the different video content, the full length practice exams and the game challenges. So the game challenges are definitely a spot I want to highlight because I think it's a really cool concept and it is very unique. Only DAT Booster offers this kind of stuff. So as you can see, they have different challenges and different games for all the different topics and there's leaderboards, right? So let's open the biology leaderboard. For example, it shows you this week, last week and all time. Now you're thinking, OK, how do I get XP? How do I get points? How do I level up? When you play the game, basically, as you play the game, you earn XP and all these different points that contribute to your overall score. And you keep playing until you get a question wrong. So we'll, we'll, we'll demo it, you know, best ways to show you, right? Let's hop in. In order, list the steps of protein translation. Okay, let's see if I still got it. I believe it's initiation, elongation, termination. Yeah, okay, there we go. So now next question, right? 50 XP. The voice box in humans. Ooh, larynx? Yeah, okay, still got it, still got it. See, now I'm having fun. I'm just, it's actually a lot of fun. It's really cool, great way to stay engaged. Connects cardiac muscle cells to enable synchronized contractions. That's what, uh, sarcomeres, right? Oh, incorrect, okay, went too fast. But essentially, when you get one wrong, the game ends. You have your average time, your level, total XP, and that's how you basically get on the leaderboard. So really cool stuff. I thought it was super unique. And again, it's something that only DAT Booster has. You also have the PAT booster, which is all of the perceptual stuff, the keyholes, you know, angle ranking, et cetera, and same concept. Question banks, video content, generators, you get the gist. All in all, I used booster because it has everything you need. Somewhere on this website is a resource, a video, a question bank that is gonna help you. So that's what I used. I thought it was great, but to each his own. If I had to recommend one website to use, it'd be DAT booster. As I mentioned earlier, this is Anki. I won't go too much into it because we could be here for hours, really, but I do want to mention it because in the section analysis part of this video, I do talk about Anki a lot. So here's a very, very brief overview, but I encourage you to go on YouTube and find other tutorials on how to use Anki and it'll really help you out. But long story short, here is a pre-made DAT Booster Anki deck that they provide for you. Saves you a lot of time because making the flashcards is a lengthy process, but the software is a spaced repetition recall software. What does that mean? Go to a flashcard, you answer it, and four prompts pop up. Again, hard, good, or easy. 
depending on how you felt about the flashcard, select one of those options. If you thought it was really easy, it won't show up again for four days in your decks. If you thought it was good, but maybe something that you want to see again, you press good, it'll show up again within 10 minutes. And then if you answer it again correctly, you can select a timing difference based on how you felt about the flashcard. So as you can see here, you've got the different streaks, how long you spend on each different card, the average per second, all that fun stuff. Again, this software is crucial because the DAT is a long preparation phase. It's gonna take you minimum eight weeks to study if you follow the study schedules we talked about. So keeping the information fresh in your brain is essential and using Anki to do so is how I did it and how I recommend anyone to do it. But let's get into the breakdown. As you can see, I scored a 22 AA, though definitely a very competitive score. That translates to around a 460 in the new scoring method. I wanna talk about my overall trends for the academic average that I received, and we'll talk about the section by section breakdown in the next segment of this video. But all I wanna note here is be wary of how one section can either raise your AA or drop it. My score, 17, in the QR section, dropped it. As we'll get into, I'm bad at math. That was kind of balanced out by my 27 because I'm very good at reading. So just keep note of how those trends can either raise your AA or lower them because that's something that's gonna either result in you having a good academic average and a well-balanced score or perhaps not the score that you want. So keep that in mind. And also remember that the PAT, the perceptual ability section, is not a factor that goes into your AA calculation. So keep that in mind. Let's go into each section break it down and talk about how you can succeed. All right, so biology, relatively straightforward section in the sense that either you know the information or you don't. I scored a 22, I was averaging a 21 on all of my practice exams, and my main takeaway for this section is something that I'll talk about in point number three, but essentially, I would have done a lot better if I made it more interesting for myself. And what I mean by that is if you're learning a piece of content, and you just can't bring yourself to really be engaged with it, it's not gonna stick in your brain as well as the stuff that you read and you're like, oh, that's actually really cool. And that's the stuff that's gonna save you on the exam day. But I'll get into that in a second. As far as how I studied in general, I used DAT Booster, their practice questions, their video content, all of their reading materials. I found it very detailed, very comprehensive, and that was my main source of information for this section. In terms of things that they offer, I highly recommend the crash courses. I mean, that was an essential part of my experience for this section. And the high yield info they give you is unparalleled. I mean, it was really something, but Anki, for those of you that don't know, Anki is a space repetition flashcard software. I'll talk about it a bit more in a different section on this video, but long story short, helps you memorize things long-term and relatively quickly, interest. So I talked about it a few seconds ago, but interest is crucial in this section. If you make it interesting, it'll stick in your brain. I'll say that again, make it interesting. Find any way you can to make this content fun. And I promise you on the exam day, there will be a question that you solely remember because you thought to yourself, huh, that's pretty cool. So that's my biggest takeaway. And finally, trust yourself. There's gonna be a question that you just have a gut feeling about. Trust your gut. You always know more than you think you know. And that subconscious feeling about a question being answer choice A versus B versus C, trust yourself. You know that you know. And don't lament on questions. Answer, move on. Either you know it or you don't. Gen Chem. So I got a 22 in this section and I was very surprised because to be honest with you, I'm still not sure what stoichiometry really is. I have never been very good at general chemistry, but I did enough practice questions where I got to the point I would recognize a question and I would know exactly how to set it up on the actual exam. Practice questions are the main takeaway here. Do as many as you can get your hands on because by the time you get to the exam, it'll be second nature how to solve anything you come across. Anki, self-explanatory. I mean, there are different trends, all the formulas, just using that space repetition software to keep it in your brain, keep it fresh and continually update your memory bank on it is crucial for this section because the last thing you want is to get to an easy trend question and just forget the trend. So I use Anki for that personally. And finally, you got concept mastering. This section is crucial for mastering the concepts and genuinely understanding what they are because if you can do that, you can tackle any problem that they throw your way on the actual exam. 
As far as what I used to study on this section, mostly DAT Booster, but for the concept mastering, I did really like using YouTube. A lot of great resources out there that are all completely free and explained in a variety of different ways that are really catered to whatever style you prefer. So main takeaway, practice questions, do them. Organic chemistry. So full disclosure, I am very bad at orgo. I mean, undergraduate organic chemistry was the bane of my existence and studying for this exam was not fun either. But if you're in the same boat as me, if you're just not good at organic chemistry, it's gonna be okay, trust me. It's gonna be fine. Just work as hard as you can, draw things out, and you will be okay. I scored a 20 on this section. I was averaging a 20, so I'll take it. No complaints here. But my main takeaway for this is draw things out. That's really gonna help you understand how all the electrons move. It's gonna make a better mental image of all the reactions, and it's gonna be essential to understanding all the concepts in this section. As far as what I used, just DAT Booster, a lot of YouTube videos, uh, just kind of detailing how all the reactions work and little fun ways to remember all of them. But that is also why I use Anki on this section, memorizing things, just having that sharp mental image in my brain and keeping that long-term proficiency. So on the day of the exam, I was still current on all of the reactions I covered throughout my studying. The reaction cheat sheet. This thing is gold. It is gold in digital format. DET Booster has it and I'm telling you, it has everything you need to know for all the major reactions. And I sat there on exam day picturing that little sheet. This thing is gold, you need to use it. But overall, main takeaway, draw things out, use YouTube and trust your studying. I was horrible at it and I did fine and you are gonna be fine too. Especially if you're good at Orgo, then it's a walking park. Perceptual ability. So I scored a 19, I was averaging a 21, but I know why I scored lower than I should have. And it's the main takeaway of this section. Practice every day. Look at me, every day. I know, I know, there's some days where you're like, ah, PAT, I'm good. No, don't do that, don't get cocky. That's what I fell for. At the start, I was very disciplined. Every single day, I was doing at least a little bit. Towards the end, I kind of slacked off and I realized the PAT is a very big mental game in the sense that you have to build up strength and stamina to do well. And if you're not practicing every single day, your strength and stamina just kind of decrease. So trust me, practice every single day, don't miss a day, and you're gonna be fine. In terms of what I used, DAT Booster has a lot of different options for this section. I found them all very enjoyable and very fun, right? Make it fun. If you can tell yourself that it's a fun game and that there's a point to doing it, it's gonna make the process go a lot better for you. So that's my main advice as well. Just make it fun and practice every day, right? Don't forget that. Speed. This section is notorious for kind of taking away your time because they're gonna give you a question that's some keyhole question or line angle and you just can't tell, you just don't know. Don't lament, skip it, answer anything, move on. Don't waste 30, 40 seconds on one question that you know is gonna be very hard for you to solve and you're not very confident on it because in this exam, every question is worth the same, the hard ones and the easy ones. If you just don't know, don't waste your time, select anything, move on. Cube and folding sheet prep. I mean, I did this, I'm sure you've heard of this strategy. It's just where you kind of on a different section in advance, prepare your cube counting little tea table, you know, right? Uh, and your folding sheet. Uh, I did that, I thought it was very helpful, but everyone's strategy for this section is a bit different in terms of how they do that. So whatever works for you, I would stick with it. But yeah, main takeaway, what is it? Every day. Reading comprehension, the best section, right? As you can tell by my smile, my favorite section. I love to read. I scored a 27 on this section. I was averaging 30s on the individual practice exams and 25 to 30 on the full length ones, depending on how locked in I was that day. Main takeaway for this section, read every day. Ideally something scientific in nature, but if you just can't bring yourself to do it and can't stay focused and engaged, read for pleasure. I mean, just grab a book that looks interesting and read it. I know in today's world, everyone just kind of I do it too, I'm not judging, but try and incorporate some reading into your daily routine, preferably sometime during the day when your brain is active and fresh, but at night works too. You're gonna see two things happen. Number one, you'll get a lot faster, your speed will increase, and number two, you'll start to understand how to look for important information 
because that is a transferable skill, whether it's going to be a fantasy book or a scientific article. Important information, key plot events, those are things your brain will learn to recognize and anticipate on any sort of article or book that you're reading, right? So read every day and work on your speed. I'm not saying rush through it. I'm saying learn to read fast and to also extrapolate the information in a manner that won't leave you pressed for time on the exam. Pick a strategy. Personally, I was a very traditional strategist. I just read all the way through and I went back and looked for information that I couldn't remember to answer any questions. Some people like search and destroy. Some people like, you know, just different strategies and combining them. Personally, I recommend picking one strategy and sticking with it and just nailing that in into your brain and into your studying, right? And the most important takeaway from this, I hear DAT Booster has a guy that's really good at explaining stuff, you know, for this section. I hear he's just amazing at breaking down problems and, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, quantitative reasoning, QR. Oh, a third name, the bane of my existence. I'm bad at math, like really bad at math. Okay, I scored a 17, I was averaging an 18, and it took work to get to here, okay? So let me start off by saying, if you're like me, it's gonna be okay. If you're bad at math, there are ways to improve on this section. But I'm not gonna sit here and give you salt and tell you it's sugar. Most of this part of the video is me telling you what not to do. So main takeaway of what not to do is, and it sounds silly, don't use Anki on this section. I know what you're thinking. What? Most of my time studying for this section was me trying to brute force memorize all these different equations and I'd have like practice problems and flashcards on them. It was weird. It doesn't work. I don't know why I did it. Don't do that. Do your practice questions, apply the formulas, and you will see immediate results, right? And what I mean by that immediate results is if you get a problem wrong, you can trace your work back up the equation and see why. And you can fact check. And now with all the resources that are out there for math between YouTube, AIs, you will most definitely see where your error was made, right? As far as the concepts, I use DAT Booster's video series, just kind of went through that, understood, okay, hey, here's how to solve this, here's how to use this equation, help me out a good deal. And uh, I'm bad at math. So again, main takeaway, don't use Anki. I don't, again, don't know why I did it, but don't do that. And also don't pseudo give up because I won't lie to you by the, let's say second week out from my exam, I have just given up on math. I was like, yeah, I'm cooked. Okay. Don't give up. There's hope. Uh, and do your practice problems. That's also important. That's all I got. All right. Let's talk about feelings of anxiety and stress and nervousness on the day of the exam. A great coach of mine once said, if you replace the word nervous with the word excited, you're in for a lot of fun. And I'll tell you why. You're not nervous to take the exam. You're excited. You're one step closer to being accepted into dental school. You know, you're not nervous to study for the exam because you are scared you might not do as well. You're excited to have the opportunity to present the information you've been learning and demonstrate it in a high score. So by reframing your mindset to see everything as a positive, it's really hard for you not to feel extra prepared and ready to win on the exam day. Last thing I'll leave you guys with, if you want 10% off your membership, use code ZUBI. That's Z-O-O-B-I for 10% off your membership. Best of luck to you studying.